Hey everyone, welcome to this Blender 3D tutorial on how to append a character rig to a character model. Specifically in this tutorial, I'm going to take this character rig right here, this IK rig, and I'm going to take it and append it to this character model right here. This is Neptune from Hyperdimension Neptunia for the PlayStation 3. Um, so before we begin, I do want to point out that I'm not going to cover how to create this specific IK rig. Um, I will put a link in the description below on where you can learn how to make it. Uh, this is the tutorial I, that I followed to create it. This is by CG Borman. It's a three-part tutorial on how to create an a IK rig. IK stands for Inverse Kinematics. Uh, it'll help you get more realistic animations. So I highly suggest, highly suggest you watch it to understand how IK works and how to properly control your IK rig. So um, I won't provide the file for that. I will provide the pot file for this uh, Neptune file in .blend format so you can follow along. So um, you should watch this tutorial first and then create your IK rig. Uh, or maybe you already have an existing rig. You can apply it. The same method will apply. So let's go and get started. So like I said, I want to take this rig and apply it to my Neptune file. So this is one object. If I go to my folder, this is my IK rig file right here. This is my character file, my Neptune file. So I want to take this file, I want to take the armature that's inside this file, and I want to do, and I want to append it to this Neptune file. So to do that, I will go to my Neptune file. I'll go to file append and then I want to find that IK rig file mine was called IK rig original and mine is right here so I'll click it then I want to go to object and then I want to double click the name of that armature and mine was just named armature so I'll double click it and as you can see that same rig is now inside my character file so it is a little bit too big so to scale it, I can just select it, make sure you're in object mode, and I can just press S and then move my mouse inward to scale it down. So it's a little high, so I'm just going to move it straight down with the G key. I'll press Z to constrain on the Z axis. I'll move it down and I'll repeat that process until it's, uh, until it's close to the right size. Let me switch to wireframe mode. So it doesn't have to be perfect, but uh, the closer you, you are to, to perfect, uh, the better off you'll be. Okay, so that seems to be the, about the right scale. So now, uh, when I originally created this IK rig, uh, the, the arms were pointing down, but our character Neptune, her hands are pointing straight out in a T pose, so I need to change that. So I will select my character rig right here, make sure you're in object mode, go into edit mode, and make sure you have X axis mirror checked. If, by having X axis mirror checked, whatever we do on one side of the armature will happen on the other side. So if it wasn't selected, whatever I do over here won't be reflected, won't be reflected on the other side. So make sure you have x-axis mirror selected since our character is symmetrical. So now we need to start moving these uh, bones, specifically the arm bones, into their proper position. So whatever mesh you're using, if you're using Neptune, then just follow along. Just try to get them as close as possible. So this is the wrist, I'm going to move this over to the wrist, it's the elbow, and because we have x-axis mirror selected, whatever we do on this side is going to happen on this side. So I want to go to top view to see if these bones are centered, and they're not really centered, they could be a little bit better. So from top view with the 7 key, I'm going to move the joint some more, because I want to get it as close as possible to the center. So 
So I'm going to move the shoulder bone back a little bit. So that seems about right. Now I want to fix the fingers. So I'm going to select all of the fingers and the tail of the hand IK, well the hand bone. I'm just going to move it back. I'll press the X key to constrain on the X axis. Now I need to move each individual finger into place. So I'll just use my circle select tool to select each bone. And put the fingers in place. Then I'll go to front view to fine tune the placement. Feel free to pause the video and if I'm going too fast. So I need to move the fingers up a little bit because they aren't too centered. So I'll move those up a little bit. I think the pinky, the pinky finger needs to move, go down a little bit. Probably same thing with the fourth finger. That seems okay. So now let me fix the head bone and the neck bone. Move the neck part up a little bit. Move this part up a little bit. I'll move it back a little bit. Okay, so now I can work on the lower portion of the body. I'm going to take the knees, move them back a little bit, move them up a little bit. And uh, if you're using a humanoid style character, you definitely want to make sure you have the bend. Uh, by having the bend, it'll help Blender know which, which direction to move the character. So for some reason these bones right here got misplaced. They're supposed to be here at the bottom. Not sure how that happened, but I'll go and put them in their correct place. I was wondering where those bones were at. Okay, so I'm just about done. I just need to rotate these foot and toe bones a little bit because they're a little, as you can see from the front, they're rotate a little bit so I'm just going to rotate them back a little bit. I'll grab the foot controller bone. I'll move them over. It doesn't need to be perfect. It just needs to be close. So then I'll save it. Okay, so I think that's I'll move the foot bone down a little bit. Entire part. Okay, so I think that's good enough. So now, once you have your rig set up properly, you need to bind this to our character mesh because, as you can see, they're not tied together. So, to do that, we just need to parent the armature to the character mesh. To do that, go to object mode, select the character mesh, make sure it has that orange glow around it. You can select it with the right with a right click. And then you want to shift right click the armature and then press control P. And we want to do armature to form with automatic weights. By using with automatic weights, Blender will try to guess which vertices go to which bone. So once we've done that, you'll see that if you grab the armature and move it around, it'll move the character mesh around as well. And if we select pose mode. Right now you're in object mode, you can go to pose mode by selecting this button and going to pose mode. If you move it around, you'll see that it poses with the bones. 
if you have something like this happening, that just means uh, that Blender was unable to determine where these vertices go. It was unable to determine which bones should control these vertices right here. So we can manually change that. I'll explain that in a bit. But you can kind of play around with your armature to move your character around. Here's another example of vertices that weren't set properly. And when you're in pose mode, if you want to reset your ro rotation and location of your bones to this original position, just press Alt-R, Alt-G. In my case, I selected all the bones by pressing A. You can do Alt-R to clear the rotation and Alt-G to clear the position. So you can see more vertices that weren't set properly so I'm going to go and fix that so to do that let's examine our character mesh right here and if you select your character mesh and go to your vertex tab right here you'll notice under vertex group you'll have a vertex group for every single bone so I'm going to sort mine you don't have to do this but um, it's easier to find bones but I'm just going to press sort vertex group groups to sort them alphabetically so the way to fix this is to select your character mesh. We will work on this part right here, the wristband. So select the character mesh and then go into edit mode. And we want the wristband to be bound to the arm underscore lower dot L bone. So select the wristband. I'm just going to use the L key to select these two parts because they're not connected to this other part of the body. With those selected, I'm going to go to arm underscore lower dot L in my vertex groups. So I'll locate arm underscore lower dot L and I'll press assign. So now Blender now knows, Blender now knows that these vertices are assigned to arm underscore lower dot L. So if we go out into object mode, select our armature, go to pose mode, and if we move our bone, you'll see it now moves with arm underscore lower dot L. So it doesn't work uh, with X axis mirror, so we have to do the other side as well. So I'll go to this side and repeat the same process, except this time I'll do it for arm underscore lower dot R. You want to make sure that you don't have what you just worked on selected. So you don't want to accidentally set the wrong vertices to the wrong bone or well, select the vertices select uh, a specific group of vertices to the wrong to the wrong bone so I'll select this part and I want to set it to arm underscore lower dot L to uh, arm underscore lower dot R so we'll select arm underscore lower dot R and press assign and of course if we did it right we go to pose mode on our armature and it'll move similar It'll move just like the uh, the left side. So with this rig, if I want to see everything that hasn't been mapped, I can grab my rig controller bone down here. I can move it. I kind of can see everything that hasn't been set. So you can see these two parts on uh, these two strands of hair that haven't been set. So I'll go to my character mesh. I'll select those two parts with the L key. And I want those bound to the head bone. So I'll locate my head bonus on my vertex groups. I'll press assign, go out, test it out, and you'll see it's now bound to the head bone. So I also have to set this middle part here, these parts right here to the ribs. I'll select the ribs vertex group press assign I'll go out go into pose mode on my armature test it out also notice that these parts right here aren't bound to anything yet so I want these bound to the arm underscore upper part arm underscore upper bones so I'll select this I'll locate my arm underscore upper dot L 
Boom. Vertex group. And I'll press assign. I'll do the same thing for the right side. I'll press arm underscore upper dot R. I'll press assign. Now I can test it. So that side works. This side works. And the ribs work. So I think the only parts left are these verses down here on the shoes. So last part, because I already know how this mesh is built. Um, the shoes are part of the leg mesh, but I don't want to alter the leg mesh, so I'll kind of create a gap there. By I'll select these vertices with my border select tool. I'll press H to hide. I'm not going to delete them. I just want to hide them. That way, I can select these shoes independently. So I want to take the left shoe and I want to set it to my foot dot L bone. So I'll locate my foot dot L bone and press assign. I'll do the same thing with the right side. I'll select foot dot R and I'll press assign. Then I'll press Alt H to bring back those vertices I hid. Now if I go to object mode, I can select my rig, go to pose mode, and now I don't see any vertices. So I'll save it. So I'm not going to cover how to uh, do the uh, how to rig the dress. Um, this is just a basic tutorial, so I'm not going to cover that. Um, but I can now go to pose mode and I can pose everything. I can point the elbows using my elbow IK controllers. I can rotate the head. I can hide the armature if I want to see how the mesh looks without the, uh, the armature in the way. I'll press Alt H to bring it back. If you're inside pose mode and you want to reset everything, uh, I think I already covered this, but it's just press A to select all, to select all the bones, and just press Alt R, Alt G, and it will restore your mesh to its original T pose position. So that's it for this video. In the next video, I will cover how to um, how to start animating. But before that, I guess I should uh, probably take a couple seconds to illustrate how to remove vertex groups. So I've taught you how to assign them. But let's say this wristband was assigned to the head accidentally. So let me assign it to the head. You don't have to do this, I'm just, just a, an illustration. So, as you can see, we don't want that. So, if we wanted to remove it, we would select the vertices that we would want to remove. Then we want to, re then we want to select the vertex group that we want to remove it from. So, we want to remove it from the head. Then, instead of assign, we'll press remove. So, now when we go back, it doesn't move with it. So it's still it was still assigned to the arm underscore lower. You can assign the same vertices to multiple bones. So that's how to remove a vertex group from a uh, a set of vertices from a bone. So uh, that's it for this video. In the next video, I'll go over go over how to um, do some simple animations. So stay tuned.